Good morning. It's a great honor to be here and um, introduce the keynote speaker today. Um, I've come to New Zealand because I believe into, in, in the um, New Zealand brand. Um, you've heard a lot about us growing the blue economy. I think that's only possible by adding more value um, and not necessarily more volume because that's, that's definitely limited in terms of wild catch. There's a country out there that has done a great job in um, creating a brand for itself and that's Norway. When you talk to people about seafood and you ask them to, to name a country that stands for seafood, they hardly ever mention New Zealand. Um, possibly lamb or wine um, comes, uh, comes to mind, but uh, definitely not seafood. However, we have a great story to tell and um, how to do that, um, I hope we can learn from uh, Terje Martinusson today. Terje is an authority. <coughs> I've met him the first time during my time in uh, Germany. He was the director of the Norwegian Seafood Export Council at that time and um, impressed me with the fact that um, he really promoted the Norwegian brand, um, Norge, seafood from Norway. And um, I look forward to hearing more from him now that he is in charge of the Norway Seafood Council as a whole. And that already for quite some years. He started off as a fisherman, so he really is an authority when it comes to seafood. And, and has, has a good story to tell us. Terry, thank you for coming here. Um, I'm, I'm very proud of being able to actually get you here to, to um, New Zealand. Um, you've been in seafood all your life, really, and um, I look forward, and I would think everybody else here, to hear what you have to tell us and how seafood has become um, a brand for Norway and Norway a brand for seafood that we can only learn of in future. So please welcome Terje Martinussen. Thank you, Volker, for the kind words and thanks for the invitation. It has been a long journey here. My wife just sent me SMS telling good night. So that just uh, sounds uh, uh, the long distance between the northern part of Norway and New Zealand. Uh, Interesting to listen to the Prime Minister. I then realized that we have a lot in common. We have the best world seafood. <laughs> we both want to grow the seafood sector. And he also expressed how important it is with market access. That's also the challenge to the Norwegian seafood uh, industry, how to get good access to uh, markets worldwide. Um, I'm very inspired by being here, and I bet met a lot of nice people eating the delicious uh, New Zealand uh, seafood. And I hope my presentation will inspire you to put more effort and more money into promotion of your seafood. Even though we are competitors, we as a seafood industry are a midget among other uh, food uh, producers in the world. Uh, the seafood sector spend too little money on uh, commercial advertisement in TV, radio, uh, magazines, newspapers, whereas uh, the rest of the, the food sector are spend spending billions of dollars into uh, 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 advertisements. So we together need to do much more in promoting our seafood. So, I have put on an agenda for my presentation today. Uh, I will start uh, telling some, uh, give some information about the size of the Norwegian seafood sector. I will then talk about uh, how we have built a brand for, for Norwegian seafood and also um, <coughs> presenting to you the, my organization, the Norwegian Seafood Council. Um, I will talk a lot on uh, the information we are collecting from, from consumers all over the world uh, and how we are using that information in, uh, in formulating and creating um, uh, advertisements for Norwegian seafood with, with high quality. I will give some examples on how we have been promoting uh, uh, seafood from Norway <coughs> in general and salmon in particular also uh, give some results of that work. Uh, and after that, um, 
explaining how or what is the position of Norwegian salmon after being working on promoting the Norwegian salmon for more than, than 20 years. Um, we are talking a lot of sustainability, and when I first spoke the first time, maybe in 2003, we were discussing uh, uh, sustainability. Uh, and uh, at that time, Norway was a bit reluctant to, to deal with eco-labeling because, uh, as I said, Norway has been dealing with, with sustainability long before any NGO was thinking about sustainability in the fisheries. We have been, we are a fishing nation uh, to which uh, the seafood resources are of immense importance and uh, the, the, the strongest stakeholder in that debate is the Norwegian <coughs> government, the Norwegian fishermen, the Norwegian uh, uh, fishing communities. And of course, we don't want to ruin what is making a living for uh, the communities and Norway as a nation. So uh, sustainability is Norway's uh, commitment. Uh, and it's also um, interesting to see how, how uh, NGOs ha are evaluating the uh, efforts Norway have made in, all in order to, to strengthen uh, the important fish stocks of Norway. We had the experience in, in the 60s and the 70s when the technology developed faster than our knowledge about sustainable management. And we were reducing the, some of the fish stocks to a level that we had to stop catching them. And by, uh, by imposing very strict uh, management regulations, all the fish stocks have been rebuilt and are now uh, at a level that they can be certified by any sustainable standard. It's a little bit slow, this. Okay. So what is the Norwegian seafood sector like? Uh, we have a population of about New Zealand size. We are around 5 million people. Uh, we are exporting seafood worth of 61 billion Norwegian kroner a year. That should be approximately 11 billion New Zealand dollars. Um, Seafood is Norway's third biggest export item. Today, of course, oil and gas is important, but we believe in, 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 in the long time of history, uh, seafood will be uh, number one. It has been important. It will be even more important in future. Norway is the second largest exporter of seafood products. Only China is bigger. And um, we are the world's number one uh, producer of salmon. We have export to more than 130 countries. This is the situation in 2013. We have a vision that in 2050, the total value of the Norwegian mara marine sector should be 550 billion Norwegian kroner by increasing value of uh, the seafood resources, and all the biological resources uh, that are in the ocean. So that's uh, the big vision. And in order to turn that vision into reality, we have to invest a lot into research, we have to invest a lot in innovation, and we have to invest a lot in marketing. This is the development of the Norwegian seafood sector over the last 10 years. We have more than doubled the value of the Norwegian seafood exports, and the most of that um, increase has been accounted for by the aquaculture sector, and that is uh, um, salmon and troth aquaculture. Today, um, the aquaculture sector accounts for like 70% of the total uh, export. And uh, aquaculture is more than 42 billion Norwegian kroner a year. This is the most important markets uh, for Norway. Uh, as you can see, Norway, uh, Russia, France, and Poland takes uh, annually uh, seafood products worth uh, 6 billion Norwegian kroner. That's more than 1 billion uh, uh, New Zealand dollar a year. And you can imagine what kind of challenge we had when uh, Russia last uh, week said, no more import of seafood products from Norway. 
we don't say that is a problem, it's a challenge. Then we just turn around and find out what other markets can we uh, support with delicious seafood from Norway. I think the big loser in this game will be the Russian consumers, the Russian seafood industry, because uh, they will lose a lot of money when they cannot get uh, 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 materials for their own processing. I'll show you this one as an introduction to how the Norwegian Seafood Council is working. This is a film showing uh, Norwegian salmon from a country of origin perspective. Do we have sound? <coughs> you had sound in the morning, but then <laughs> maybe we blew the loudspeakers. We have some water, please. Oh, it is here. Okay. Yeah, this, this could actually have been a promotion of New Zealand seafood. Uh, maybe one difference, I don't think you find snow as low as sea level in New Zealand. Um, yeah, this was one. Um, the Norwegian Seafood Council was established in 1991. We are a 100% uh, governmental owned uh, company owned by the Ministry of Trade and Fisheries, but we are 100% financed by the industry through a levy. Each exporter have to pay 0.75% of the export value to the Norwegian Seafood Council in order to promote uh, generically uh, Norwegian seafood. We have an annual budget of around 500 million Norwegian kroner. That should be some, some 90 million uh, New Zealand dollar. And um, we have offices in 13 markets around the world, investing in some 20 m important markets to uh, Norwegian uh, seafood. Uh, when promoting Norwegian seafood, we have uh, three uh, basic or three fundamental uh, conditions. One is the nature. Uh, we think we have perfect conditions for both wild resources and uh, aquaculture in Norway. We have the people uh, that has been working with seafood for generations. We have acquired uh, knowledge and uh, in addition to the um, the experience from one generation to another. We have invested a lot in research and science in order to improve uh, the seafood industry. 
And we believe it's right to say that, that Norway have invented the modern uh, salmon aquaculture. And uh, even though we are investing a lot, there are much more to do in order to improve uh, the, the technique of, of aquaculture. And the third element is the sustainability. We believe that we can't be a seafood nation without uh, taking care of, of, of the resources, taking care of the nature. So that is basic when we are, are promoting uh, seafood from Norway. So um, what is the achievement? Um, we have been working uh, more than 20 years, and when we ask consumers in important market uh, for the 20 most important markets for Norwegian seafood, what do they believe uh, or, or which country do they associate with when they think of seafood? And Norway is number one. Uh, if we were to ask people in Asia, then Norway would be number two, second to Japan. And down on that line, you will find New Zealand, uh, I think, on, on place number 12, if you, are, if you are talking about Asia as a market. Um, why is this uh, association to Norway important? Well, we believe that uh, knowledge about the country is basic if consumers actively is going to, to buy a Norwegian salmon or Norwegian seafood products. Without this knowledge, they will be not uh, conscious about uh, what kind of, uh, of seafood they would buy. We are talking about sustainability. And um, the Norwegian Seafood Council is working on making sustainability um, uh, relevant as a possible for both uh, consumers and trade. And in this advertisement in France, we are focusing on su sustainable, controlled, and know-how-based farmed farming under hypothetical and, and natural condition, resulting in a very high quality product with great taste, taste and a high uh, nutritional value. And Norway and New Zealand uh, are among the leading seafood nations in the world, especially when it comes to sustainability. But the question is, how can we make our sustainable regime uh, relevant uh, to the consumer? In order to answer that question, we have to realize how the consumers are thinking when they are buying seafood. And just realize, a consumer going into a, a, a supermarket, spending maybe 10 or 20 minutes in shopping, um, what is he then thinking of? Oh, is, is, are, is his concern then environment? Is his concern health? Or, or how does a consumer think when he is, uh, is uh, buying uh, goods for making a dinner? That's the kind of knowledge that we uh, ought to know in order to, to try and have an impact on the decisions when they finally go, go to, the, to the seafood shelf. Um, there are four uh, global food trends and changes in society that are inflecting how we eat. It's environment, it's health, it's in indulgence, and it is convenience. And environment is related to sustainability, carbon footprint, uh, recycling, uh, that kind of things. But the effect of the behavior is is, uh, uh, can't be experienced until uh, after a long period. So the dec decision you are taking today may have an impa impact in some years. Uh, health is in some ways related to an environment, as especially food safety. Uh, but other common attributes related to health is omega-3, omega-6, uh, vitamins, uh, that kind of things. and. Um, and uh, what you eat today will not have an, uh, an effect immediately, but after some time you will get the health benefits of eating the correct uh, uh, food. However, seafood has the position as one of the most healthy protein sources and are, when it comes to health, in a good place. In indulgence is convenience, enjoyment, 
taste, uh, versatility, and, uh, and the um, uh, social aspect of a good meal, uh, satisfaction, and so on. Convenience is saving time and effort uh, for, for, for spending the good life. You don't want to, to spend too much time on, on making uh, uh, the dinner, but you want to, to enjoy it. And seafood has a huge, huge uh, opportunity within uh, convenience. Just think of sushi, how, how simple and easy that is. Then we split uh, this picture into lifestyle decisions and situ situational uh, decision. Consumers experience that convenience and indulgence are in contradiction to environment and uh, healthy choices. And then we are talking about trend, or, or is it trendy? Uh, trend, trend is the way we are going. Trendy is what is cool. And to care about the environment is trendy, but the trend is uh, carelessness. Uh, to, to care about the health is trendy, is, uh, is trendy, yeah. Whereas the, whereas the trend is, uh, the trend is obesity. So, uh, the cause of these trends you will find in indulgence and uh, convenience. And our focus on environment and health is an attempt to, to restore a kind of, of balance. So, what are the concer concerns uh, among consumers when it comes to seafood decisions? Well, they will separate the different um, uh, questions into uh, concerns uh, in the outer circle is the concerns for uh, the world around me. Then we have the concerns for other people and animals. We have concerns for me and my family. And in the inner circle is actually the concerns for me and my family. What am I going to have for dinner today? Um, so you see, in, in the inner circle, we are concerned about the quality, the freshness, the taste. Uh, inspiration, that kind of things. And then we come with uh, the health benefits, the beauty. Uh, in, in outer circus, we have uh, things like ecological, uh, production methods, uh, fair trade. And in the outer circle is sustainability, energy use, recycling. And um, the outer circle is more political. Uh, the political set the framework for how we should operate, what kind of uh, impact should uh, uh, seafood production have uh, on, on, on the environment, or that kind of thing. Uh, and when we talk to consumers, they will have some ideas about what sustainability is. It's a, diff it's a difficult concept. Uh, they will have some ideas that sustainability is linked to ecological, it will be linked to production methods, to, uh, to catching quotas, uh, to the feed formulas. Um, but how important is that to in, in, the, in the buying situation? So what, what we have to do is to make sustainability relevant to the consumer. We have to guide them so that they have an understanding that the, product, the, the products we are producing are sustainable, they are natural, they, they have uh, food safety in hand, and they are uh, delicious. So that is the challenge for us as consumers to make this relevant uh, to, the, to the consumer. And we need to work together with the retailers um, and producers that are interested in doing sustainable choices. So, what we see is that more and more, uh, so this was the example how we are making sustainability relevant to the consumer. Um, and also uh, the supermarkets, uh, they take a decision, they want to supply their customer with reli reliable, sustainable seafood. This is an example from Carrefour in Indonesia. 
uh, advertising for Norwegian salmon as a sustainable uh, choice for, for the consumer in Indonesia. So we have, to, we have to guide the consumers. It's not enough to put ecological or sustainable on the package. You have to, to work much harder on that issue in order to get the consumer realizing that you are actually the one that are producing something that is important uh, for them, for his and his family. Okay. Norway or the Norwegian Seafood Council, we have access to what I would say is the world's uh, uh, best uh, seafood consumer database. Uh, we are investing a lot of money in, in getting market information from our uh, 20 or 22 major markets. And we have just made a decision that we will invest even more money in uh, acquiring uh, market intelligence to better understand how the consumers in important markets are thinking. And this is the kind of information that we are collecting, uh, asking people about uh, convenience. Uh, then we, 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 we raise questions about uh, quick to prepare, easy to prepare. Uh, indulgent is uh, relinked or related to inspiring to prepare, or if they think seafood uh, tastes good. Health is uh, linked to their belief uh, or the health benefits, whether it's a lean alternative and environment is uh, whether it's produced environmentally or if it is uh, safe to eat. Okay, on the basis on, on this analysis, we can now uh, draw a picture about the global consumer. What is important to the global consumers when it comes to seafood? And number one and number two oh, and two is taste and health. And we can see that uh, environment and, and food safety is not that important when you ask the, the, the consumers. There are many reasons for choosing seafood and which would you say is most important. If we then look at, the, for example, France, there we see the picture are, is a little bit different. Um, so. Um, the health, food safety, and environmental production uh, seems to be less important in France, whereas uh, the notion of lean is somewhat more important. This just to explain to you that uh, we can analyze this data in, in many ways, and we see that uh, the situation in one country differ from another country, and that is the kind of information that we are using when we are designing our campaigns. We want to, 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 to target uh, the consumers uh, individually. We can also go further and, and make a drawing like this. Um, the color is not very good, but he, he, it should be a cross here. And the cross is the average value. Uh, uh, so the cross this way, uh, horizontally, is the average on uh, how important they are evaluating uh, the different aspects. So above that line is, is above average, and under is under, and so on. And we get then uh, four, four uh, uh, rectangular here. And what we in general can say, it's important what is here in this uh, rectangle. That is the, the main drivers for, uh, for seafood consumption. This one is not important. So if you get a, 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 uh, um, some questions here or results here, you can more or less uh, forget about it. This is interesting. What's here is, uh, is, uh, is possibilities where we can have an impact on the consumer so he next time will, will evaluate uh, the product in a different way. So, um, uh, globally, uh, taste and health is important. Uh, food safety is also important and is a kind of, of a question that we can Im improve on. And what we are doing in, in the marketing is we will try and put more efforts on making taste relevant to the consumer. 
Um, we believe that we should inspire consumers to eat seafood uh, of joy rather than of duty. They should not feel uh, obliged to eat seafood because it's healthy. No, we should learn the, the consumers to eat seafood because that's tasty, that's the, the, the best uh, delicious meal you can ever have. Uh, also, food safety. We see in some countries we can make that more relevant because we are producing uh, safe seafood and we can prove it. And then we can, we can also inspire, say, Japanese consumers to buy Norwegian seafood since food safety is important in Japan. We have to tell them about how safe our seafood is. Okay. Uh, we see also that um, uh, indulgent is, in, is important. Inspiring and taste together is indulgent. And that is something we are using when it comes to the marketing of cod. We had the problem in Norway that cod, which is our most important uh, ground fish species, that came together with other what we call cheap whitefish. And we would like to, to emphasize uh, the benefits of cod compared to, to, to whitefish. We don't want our cod to be, uh, to be mentioned as a whitefish, because when I hear the word whitefish, I think that is very cheap. So we created a story about the cod, the, the matured cod that comes to Norway for spawning. And in the old history, uh, the name of the cod was Scray. And I think you have also a lot of stories about your seafood from ancient time that you can use in, in, in promotion. So we are promoting then cod as Scray. And we have produced a special quality standard for that. And, um, and, and then uh, promoting this to the best chefs in, in Europe. We are inviting the chefs to Norway. They will uh, learn how to prepare it when it's really, really fresh. Uh, this is a chef from, from UK, and this is a promotion we had at Harrods in, in London. And we have been working with this concept for more than 10 years. And what we realize is that it takes some years until you get uh, the benefits on what you are investing in marketing. And, and over the last two or three years, the export volume of Scray and fresh cod from Norway have increased tremendously. So the next step will be to, to create more innovative products, not only whole, uh, headed and gutted fresh cod, but go more into fillets, uh, fresh loins, and so on. Then I'll talk about uh, a salmon campaign. Uh, we are investing uh, a lot of money in, in campaigns for salmon. And in this campaign, we wanted to develop a regional concept uh, where we can make one film and then use it in, in more markets. So this is a film created for Poland, Italy, and Spain. Just the language are, are different. And uh, the main idea here is to create awareness for Norwegian salmon and to create preferences among the consumers to eat Norwegian salmon. And this is how we are working. It's a whole integrated concept. I will in, in a minute show you uh, the film. So it will be a campaign with TV commercials. We are doing print advertisements in magazines, in newspapers. We are also working on with the digital media. We have our own the websites. We have Facebook. We have YouTube. Uh, and of course, we have uh, store promotion with decorations in the shops. With, uh, with tastings and so on, and this is the uh, advertisement. And, and, and this uh, activity is, I must say, we, we are doing it in very close cooperation with the Norwegian exporters. So they are there in the shops with the products when we are running the campaigns. So we need to have a very close 
dialogue with the, with the producers. And this is how the evaluation of this campaign was. Um, when we are investing millions in, in TV commercials, we want to be sure that this commercial have the effect that we want. So we do a pre-test. We are testing uh, the advertisement on the consumer. And on the basis of that evaluation, we are deciding, are we going, are we investing this money, or are we stopping at this moment? And this is the, uh, the uh, Adeval, and uh, it shows, uh, compared to other advertisements uh, that uh, they are doing in Europe, that this has a higher score than benchmark values. And that's where we set the limit. We should be better than benchmark. And we see that uh, the commercial works well in all the markets. Uh, the consumer get involved. That means that the, con the consumer likes the advertisement. We can also see that the consumer are motivated. That means the consumer, after having seen this commercial, it's more likely that we'll go and buy Norwegian salmon than before they saw the advertisements. So, uh, so what I, I just tell you is that we are using a lot of market intelligence before, under, and after uh, uh, running the campaigns. And this is the results. Uh, we are running these campaigns in three years in these three countries. And this is uh, the preferred country of origin when you ask consumers in Poland, Italy, and Spain. So in, in Poland, the values has uh, increased from 64 to 71%. In Italy, from 46 to 51. And Spain's from 63 to 75%. Same with knowledge about Norwich as the, as the salmon producer also increased values over the years. And I can also tell you that the export figures, the value exported to these countries has also increased over the years. And that is what is most important to the Norwegian exporters. So uh, the, 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 the marketing activities we are doing need to have an effect on the, uh, on, on the seafood export from Norway. I'll skip this one because I see I'm running a bit out of time. Uh, but this uh, is to um, actually to show that after, after we have been working with salmon over so many years, uh, there are some, some, uh, some results in the term that salmon is now considered by the consumers to be a separate category above other uh, uh, seafood uh, products. So compared to cod, uh, which is our second most important seafood product, salmon is, uh, is seen to have uh, more uh, versatility. It will be eaten on more uh, occasions, uh, being it on weekdays, weekends, at restaurants, and so on. And uh, yeah, salmon is the, the market leader. But how is salmon positioned compared to other uh, proteins? And if you look at uh, this picture, uh, uh, health, healthiness, taste, convenience, value for money, and availability. We see that salmon is scoring high on, uh, on, on, on taste, on ta taste and healthiness, but below other uh, for when it comes to value for money and availability. Uh, and why is that? Uh, so compared to other uh, uh, proteins, they are outstanding when it comes to, um, to, to health. Uh, people belie believe also they will get a long life and the, and the beauty appearance. So that's strong on, on salmon. Uh, it tastes uh, very good. Uh, and, uh, and what is very positive is that children of today, they eat salmon and they love salmon. If I go a, a generation back, there were hardly any children that was eating salmon. So that's to me a, a important message because in the future, when this generation grow up, I know there will be heavy salmon consumers among these kids that love, uh, love salmon. And uh, uh, it's a high score on convenience. We find the 50 million recipes of salmon if we, if we Google. Uh, which is good, 
and uh, consumers see salmon as being extremely usable. But there is still a lot to do in order to develop more products, uh, in order to make the consumer think that salmon is more available compared to chicken and beef. And also when it comes to price, um, uh, people think it's uh, a bit low on value because uh, compared to other uh, proteins, there are a, a, a not that uh, wide variety of, of products. I think also we can improve a lot uh, by taking this picture into account. We can improve on, on availability and we can improve on value uh, for money by doing product development. And I show you this only to explain how important product development is. This is from the Norwegian market where two major uh, innovations have, have driven the market. One is this, uh, what we call the salmon chain. It is uh, portions of salmon frozen and that was increasing uh, or boosting the sale and then a couple of years ago, we got these uh, freshly packed uh, portions and that make it very uh, convenient for the consumers to bring salmon home for dinner. So this is how we can uh, work further. Okay, I see that the time is out. I, I, I wanted to explain a little bit about the seafood from Norway, how we are working when it comes to marketing and how we have positioned uh, salmon worldwide in a very strong position compared to other seafood and also a strong position compar co compared to other uh, proteins. I would just encourage you to invest in promoting seafood from New Zealand. Uh, I'm not afraid because I believe we should work together to make uh, a, a bigger seafood markets and there will be more uh, enough consumers out there to uh, to uh, give a good business both for uh, Norwegian producers as well as New Zealand uh, producers. So once again, thank you for inviting me and uh, all the best for the rest of the conference. Thank you very much, Terje. Welcome. No, oh, that's a benchmark, isn't it? Um, it feels like we should be able to replace Norway with New Zealand going forward. Yeah. Um, I, I found it very interesting that the difference between Norway and New Zealand, I think is probably we have more animals here, um, but in terms of population, in terms of coastline, in terms of sustainability, the clean, pristine, wonderful environment, outstanding natural landscape um, is basically the same. So we should be able to do a good job going forward. Um, by promoting the brand New Zealand. And um, the intention of inviting Terje here today was to promote the idea with the seafood industry of, um, of getting that idea of promoting New Zealand as the country of origin um, amongst ourselves and, and building on that. Um, Terje, New Zealand is also known for good wine. So thank you very much for thank joining us today. But um, I also thought that uh, seafood cookbook from New Zealand would be a good yeah. idea for you too. Thank you. So, thank you. I love seafood and I love cooking. So thank you very, very much. Good. Very good.